What's going on, everybody? Spite back at it again, bringing some mellow dulcet tones to offset some of that super high yammy noob yeet energy. And I know what you're gonna say, but Spite, I'm here for my daily dose of memes and motorcycle facts shouted at me in a breathless 12 minutes. To that I say, don't worry your pretty little head, Yam will be back in the next list. Just sit back and let this smooth baritone ease you into another discipline of motorcycling you've probably never really thought about before. That's right, today we're gonna find out what happens when you take take the easygoing nature of a cruiser and smash it together with the power and looks of a super sport and talk about sport touring. Now, in general, sport touring is often thought of as the realm of 40-something divorcees who want to spend a lot of money on a bike, but don't want to push it to the limit or descend into the depths of boomerdom and get a Harley. Here's the thing, though. The average street rider, and yes, this probably includes you, has more in common with those old fogies in their two-wheeled sedans than you might think. And I say that as a guy who owns a VFR 800, the most patrician sports touring motorcycle ever made. Shut up, Beamer boys, you're just jealous you don't have a V4 and VTEC. Now, without dragging this preamble on any longer, let's dive in and figure out what exactly sport touring is all about and why you should care about it. Let's start with a hypothetical situation. Imagine for a minute you own a 959 Panigale in that matte white finish with those bright red rims. Imagine you're riding down the back straight of Coda with this sound ushering you into turn 12. Nice, right? Now imagine you have to pack your suit up into the bike and ride home 50 miles at the end of the day, and when you get home you find out that your car is broken down. Now you have to commute to work on that little slice of raw Italian power. Imagine the pain in your wrists and your back as you sit in traffic inching your way forward with that rear exhaust pipe, roasting your family jewels in a rich melange of gooch juice and exhaust fumes. Slightly less nice, right? The thing about race replica motorcycles like the Panigale, the R1, or even the 675R is they're designed to do one thing. Tear ass around a track with you hanging off the seat like a spider monkey as you explore the outer limits of traction. But unless you're a proper street Rossi, you're not going to be doing that on your way to work. They can feel sluggish in a turn at low speeds since you're not going to be able to keep them on the boil, and as a result, you're not going to find a lot of usable power on the street simply because that's not what they're meant to do. So how do you get the looks and feel of a super sport in a more streetable package? That's right, with a sport tourer. As it happens, Ducati makes a so-called Panigale for the street in the form of a super sport, which is kind of an ironic name when you think about it. Let's compare these two bikes directly and see if we can't understand a little bit more about why the super sport is a bike that can do big miles, but also carve a canyon road like a hot knife through butter. The Ducati 959 Panigale makes 157 horsepower at 10,500 RPM and 79 foot-pounds at 9,000 RPM. It sports a 32.4 inch seat height and weighs in at 440 pounds in running order. Most importantly for this comparison though, its wheelbase is 56.3 inches which when paired with its 24 degree rake gives it super sharp handling. The downside is this creates a really compact rider triangle with more than 37 degrees of forward lean in an upright position. If you tuck in, you'll feel almost as though you're sitting on top of that front wheel. The Super Sport, on the other hand, makes 110 horsepower at 9,000 RPM and 71.3 foot-pounds of torque at 6,500. What that means is that you won't have to keep the engine wound up to get peak power out of it since it makes usable power down at the low end. It's not just about the engine though, the seat height is lower at 31.9 inches and the wheelbase is longer at 58.3. Another point for the Super Sport is the addition of raised clip-ons. All of that combines to a forward lead angle of closer to 30 degrees. Finally, it weighs in at 463 pounds wet, which you might expect from a bike with a taller windscreen and removable hard cases. Sure, it might not have true sport bike chops when it comes to the track, but again, that's not where it's meant to live. So let's summarize this little head-to-head. -head. A sport touring motorcycle makes less top-end power, but has more low-end grunt. It'll have a lower seat height, higher clip-ons or true handlebars, and typically has a longer wheelbase. They'll come with more wind protection, rider comforts like heated grips, and the ability to haul luggage or a pillion with ease. So now that we have some criteria, let's take a look at some other true sport tours. 
Before we do though, I need to pause for a second and remind you that we're giving away three motorcycles right now in the year of our Lord 2020. We've got the Triumph Street Triple R, the XSR 700, and the KTM Duke 390. They're going to three lucky people over on yammynoob.co. Head over there, pick a subscription, and get a whole bunch of other perks. You'll get access to our Discord server where you can chat with Yam and I or over 1,600. Jesus, 1,600? Really? Wow. 1,600 of your fellow riders, or soon-to-be riders. We've got channels for buying and selling bikes, sharing some of your favorite memes, and helping us pick mods for the giveaway bikes. If you don't want to subscribe, but you want to get entered all the same, head over to yamminoobmerch.com and get yourself a hat, a shirt, or whatever suits your fancy. If you use the code TRIPLE2020, you'll get 10% off and 2x entries to win the bikes. You gotta get it in now, though, because that is only a limited-time offer. So if you like your near daily dose of memes and the occasional insightful point, support what we do by clicking the links down below. Now, let's get back to it. What are some examples of sport touring motorcycles? Well, no list of sport touring motorcycles would be complete without the VFR 800. Now, I know you're rolling your eyes thinking I engineered this whole video so I'd have an excuse to talk about my motorcycle for a few minutes on the channel. And while you're not entirely wrong, the VFR is a perfect example of a sport tourer. The VFR is powered by a 782cc V4 that makes 104 horsepower and 55 foot-pounds of torque. It's got an adjustable seat height going from 31 to just about 32 inches, and Honda sells bar risers to add 3 quarters of an inch to the bar height. The deluxe model even comes standard with heated grips, traction control, ABS, and fully adjustable suspension. All of that and the bike weighs in at 529 pounds ready to ride. This is a dad bike for sure, but it'll handle a twisty road with the best of them and you're gonna get that juicy v4 sound take a listen mm, yeah that's the good stuff right there now what about a bike with a little more pep in its step well, Kawasaki's got you covered with the Ninja 1000. The Ninja's got a 1043cc inline-4 engine making 138 horsepower and 73 foot-pounds of torque. Sure, it's not exactly screaming, making just a little bit more power than a 600, but while your Jixxer bro is going to have back problems in his 30s, you'll be sitting comfy on your 32.3-inch seat with only 12 degrees of forward lean. And that's crazy. I mean, any less and you're going to be closing in on cruiser territory there. But don't let its relaxed ergos fool you. The Ninja 1000 ships with Bridgestone Battleaxe Hypersport S22 tires, so it'll have plenty of grip to get you down your favorite back road. The best part is that the bike's got an electronic cruise control, bi-directional quickshifter, and cornering ABS. Apparently, they made the fairings a little bit bigger in 2019 to keep the bike cooler, which is always nice on those hot summer days. Let's take a second to hear what the Ninja 1000 sounds like. Okay, so you want power. Real power. For some reason, 140 horsepower just isn't doing it for you. Okay, fine, let's get stupid for a hot second with a Kawasaki Ninja H2 SX. Oh baby, this is it right here. As if the Busa wasn't a silly enough sports tourer, now Kawasaki done went and slapped a goddamn supercharger in a bike and said, sure, this is a totally reasonable way to commute to work. The H2 SX has a 998cc supercharged inline four, making 210 horsepower and 101 foot-pounds of torque. Okay, I gotta take a second here and just say, Kawasaki, for the love of God, stop. You're gonna make Suzuki wanna make another Busa, except this time it's gonna have a solid rocket booster instead of an engine. But anyway, the H2SX has a 32.9 inch seat height, weighs in at 577 pounds wet. I can take an educated guess and say the bike has about 30 degrees of forward lean, but when you're barreling down the highway at the speed of sound, the wind resistance against your chest is gonna compensate for all of that, and you're not really gonna feel it in your wrists. Just in case you thought for a minute that this was just another straight line drag strip kind of bike, let me remind you that it ships with saddlebags, a slipper clutch, cruise control, six axis IMU, cornering ABS, traction control, bi directional quick shifter, and power modes. But the cup holder's an optional extra. 
Now let's see what this absolutely bananas sports tourer sounds like. So now that we've taken a look at some sport tours from the reasonable to the ridiculous, let's answer the question, who are sport tours for? You'll have to forgive me for starting this section with a cop-out, but they're for everyone. Literally everybody. Should everyone get a supercharged go-fast bike? Probably not, but think about it this way. Everyone likes to think about that trip they want to take down the Pacific Coast Highway, but that's 655.8 miles. If you try that on your CBR 600RR, not only will your spine need a thorough realigning before you've made it to Santa Barbara, but your hands would be so numb from the vibrations. But what if you're only riding to and from work? If you're like me, when the weather is nice and you can get away with it, you probably prefer to take the bike. Might only be a couple of miles, or maybe you do 50 at a time, but you want to be comfortable and carry a day's worth of crap with you. Where are you going to put it on your R1, Mr. Street Rossi? What? No way you're wearing a backpack! The correct answer is in your top case, tail bag, or panniers. And on the weekends, what kind of riding do you really do? Do you spend all of them at Redline going around a track? If you do, you've probably got a track bike, and if you don't, you're probably going for a ride down some of your favorite back roads with your friends. Do you really need 180 horsepower and committed race ergos to take a 45 mile an hour corner? Yeah, I didn't think so. If you put a guy on an RSV4 1100 in a group with a guy on a Ninja 650, I'd wager that the Ninja will be right there on the RSV4's tail because Lime Creek Road isn't a racetrack. Instead, I bet the guy on the Ninja is going to have a lot more fun since he can get a lot closer to using everything the bike has to offer, and he'll be comfy doing it. So before you turn your nose up at a sport touring motorcycle, thinking they're slow or for old guys, take a second to think about the kind of riding you actually do. You'll be surprised how much more sense a sport touring motorcycle makes on the streets. And there you have it, another foray into the world beyond sport bikes. I hope this has helped some of you folks realize that sport tours are actually a really fun option. Personally, I had no idea how good I had it until I rode my buddy's CBR 1000 RR, and not only did the bike feel super tiny, but I felt like I was riding on top of the front wheel in the fetal position. You don't have to live that life to get sport bike power and handling. Now before I sign off, don't forget to head over to yamminoob.co and sign up. You'll be supporting our two-wheeled shenanigans, and you'll get some cool perks, and hell, you might even win a free motorcycle. Seriously, Yam's giving a ton away already, and it doesn't look like it's slowing down anytime soon. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Fact. Oxygen was discovered in 1774 by Joseph Priestley. Up until that point, people had to wear spacesuits. No, seriously, Google it. Goodbye.